How did you return home? Well, uh, that's kind of interesting because the last few uh, the few months I was in the Marine Corps, um, the uh, Cuban crisis happened. That's when Castro took all the political prisoners, dumped them out of the out of the cells that he was holding them in and basically shipped them to the United States or gave them the opportunity to defect um, to the United States. And of course that created quite a flurry of, uh, of events over here in the United States, so especially down in Florida. So they called the military in to go down to Florida to, pro to help aid uh, the air marshals and other uh, governing officials uh, to process all these Cubans into the country because there were civilians taking their boats and renting boats and buying boats of all kinds of uh, disarray, and, uh, sad state of repair and, and going down and picking all these Cubans up for large money. They were getting paid, they were charging all the Cubans everything they had just so they could come to the United States. And so we were processing uh, those people in, and uh, and of course uh, uh, I ran a guard shift. And uh, once that was over with, uh, and uh, pretty much all the Cubans were uh, re displaced and and uh, resegregated into their own little like uh, people with families here in the United States or people who were married or people who were single once they had all uh, been split up and sent to their respective uh, families or they actually set up uh, several camps throughout Florida for them to, to, to go to and they housed them there until they were able to process them further into the country. Um, but anyway once that was over it was just a simple uh, go back to uh, Camp Lejeune uh, here's your processing paperwork. Uh, sign it. You're ready to go home. And so uh, I was discharged, and uh, I simply uh, drove out the gate uh, to the bus station, or caught a taxi to the bus station, and then took a bus and came home. How did your family and community uh, greet you when you got home? Oh, uh, no, uh, no big uh, speeches, or there was no big parties or anything. Everybody was happy to see me, of course, but uh, it wasn't anything elaborate or special. Uh, just kind of another day, and uh, and of course, you know, times throughout. You know, there were several times I visited home uh, throughout my tour of duty. So it wasn't like we were totally estranged, and I always stayed in contact with them by phone or mail. Uh, so everybody knew when I was coming home, and, and of course they was glad to see me. But uh, uh, you know, it was it was all upbeat, and, but wasn't elaborate. How hard was it to return to civil in life? Well, it it was a little bit because uh, it was difficult somewhat because uh, you're used to being regimented and doing things a certain way and in a certain manner in a certain time frame and uh, once that's that regimentation is gone uh, you seem to have uh, sort of a void of purpose or a void of time where you just kind of wander around somewhat aimlessly uh, you know, you know that you want to. You know, you have goals and aspirations that you still want to follow, but nothing really seems as urgent or as or as high priority as it did before. Uh, you know, you, you kind of have a sense of loss with the camaraderie of being with other your friends and your and the, and the people that you serve with. And, uh, so there's a loss there. Uh, there's also you find that. Uh, Socially, you're a little different. You don't quite fit in with the same friends that you had before you went in. Uh, they seem somehow different to you, and they're really not. It's 
uh, any different. And I think that the person who goes in the military uh, undergoes a certain change, and, it, and it's, I think it's a maturity, a certain maturity that uh, transpires in a person when they're when they've gone into the military and then they come out. They're certainly not necessarily the same person. I don't think that it's a bad thing. In fact, in a lot of ways, I think it's a good thing. Um, but I don't think when you go in, you are the same person when you come out. And a lot of people find that to be odd. I know my grandparents uh, had a little difficult time understanding who I was. They had no clue what I'd been through or what I had done in the past six years. And therefore they could not identi identify with me as easily as they could before I went in. Because when, before I went in, I was just, you know, their grandson. And my, you know, same old Rick, just, you know, happy-go-lucky. And uh, when I came out, I was, you know, uh, had some, you know, issues of, uh, Hey, you know, what am I going to do with my life? You know, I was more, more intense and maybe less jovial and uh, a little less, maybe a little less patient with some of the other folks around me. But uh, I think that was just trying to adapt, you know, trying to, to get back in this, this, the swing of being a civilian. Are you a member on any veterans organi organization? Uh, no. Um, no, I'm not. Do you have any contact with fellow veterans? Yeah, every once in a while I'll, I'll uh, talk to uh, somebody that I was in with. Uh, uh, there's a couple of people that uh, we stay in contact from time to time, but it's been years. And, but it doesn't seem to matter because I think it's one of those unspoken things that you could go 20 years without talking to the, these people and, you know, you just pick right up where you left off. And uh, I think that's also another positive uh, aspect of the military and the camaraderie that's, that's formed when you're in there. How has been... How has being in the military affected your life? Uh, I think it's been a, a, a positive uh, influence. Uh, I always thought that, you know, I, I might have missed out on something else when I went in, but, uh, you know, in retrospect, looking back on it, I think it was probably one of the most positive times of my life. You know, I did a lot of things that that uh, a lot of people don't get the opportunity to do. And, uh, you know, overseas, for example, I uh, went over to Italy and uh, Rome and France and Portugal and Spain. Uh, I visited all those places. And, uh, and you, you get to see the cultures, the different cultures and how people live and, and uh, you get to appreciate the United States more because of of the different and varying cultures over there and they're not nearly as uh, uh, free and easy and uh, and well taken care of as we are here in the United States uh, they don't have near the opportunities uh, in some countries um, I know in Turkey it's just probably one of the newer, you know, a new country as far as countries go, uh, ge uh, geologically speaking. Uh, and they're very, very particular about things. Uh, when we were over there, women still wore, still, uh, still wore veils across their face. And uh, a young lady had call, uh, come out to... Uh, speak with a couple of us uh, in, in formation one, one day and uh, her mother came out from behind the house with a stick 
and whipped her all the way back behind the house with a stick because she had spoke to an American out of turn just by being there and speaking with us was pretty much against their policy so her mother beat her with a stick all the way back to behind her house which you know I thought was kind of a, a little brutal but for no more than she'd done but at the same time this is part of their culture and this is the way they live and you have to respect that um, but that's why I say it was interesting about all the varying cultures did you learn any lessons yeah well yeah the lessons uh, I think uh, interaction with people getting along teamwork um, respect for people and their position I mean uh, especially in the military uh, you may not necessarily personally like the person behind the chevron uh, but you respect the rank of the chevron and so therefore you respect the person that's wearing the chevron I think that's a lesson that everybody needs to learn. Uh, just because you don't necessarily personally like someone, you should at least be able to try to work with them for a common goal. Is there anything I forgot to ask you or any other stories you would like to share? Well, there's <laughs> there are so many things. Uh, but uh, and it's and it's hard to encompass them all in a, in a short period of time like this. Uh, I I think you know basically I think enough said and, and uh, I think you did a great job asking me questions and uh, appreciate it. I would just like to thank you for meeting with me and for serving in our country. Thank you, dear. Appreciate it.